Hey, PAG, Pastor Don, and I have the opportunity to talk to you this morning about giving. How many of you know that it says in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, each one of us should give what we have decided to give out of our heart? Not reluctantly or under compulsion, but the Bible teaches us that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. I want to commend you for your faithfulness in this COVID season. The Bible teaches us what the enemy has meant for bad, the Lord would turn around and use for his good. And we have saw how the Lord has done this during this COVID virus. You have been amazingly faithful in your giving. And so this morning, as you prepare your offering, you have three ways to give. You can drop it by the office, you can mail your gift in, or you can give online. So until next week, let me pray and bless you. We love you, Lord. We pray today as people give, the kingdom would continue to expand and move forward. We pray that you would mend marriages, that you would heal bodies, that you would do ridiculous, incredible miracles that only you could take credit for. Continue to, to provide and to protect your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, we love you, and we'll see you soon.
Hey PAG, welcome to our online venue. We're going to start today in 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1. And it reads this, Then Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, key location, where the Lord had appeared to his father David. It was on the threshing floor of Arana, the Jebusite, the place provided by David. Just grab a hold of that scripture, tuck it back there. We're going we're gonna to refer to it often. We're also going to be in 2 Samuel chapter 24 as well. But I want to start with this. I believe that God is doing something big in America. I believe that through this uh, pandemic and through the racial tensions and struggles that we're experiencing in, in 2020, we are experiencing a year that I identify it as a year of threshing. Let me uh, define what threshing means. It means this. Threshing is defined as the process of separating the grain from the chaff. It keeps what is edible, sustainable, and full of purpose, and it discards what is not. So it keeps the good stuff, but it gets rid of the bad stuff. And that process is a sifting. It's a grinding. It's a it, you know uh, it's a process where where oxen back in that day would would tread upon the grain and it would separate the the kernels from from the stuff that was useless and and it would leave the stuff that was was life giving and it would get rid of the stuff that really had no purpose whatsoever. Now, I believe that it's easy for all of us to settle for the chaff when God has so much grain for us to experience. See, grain makes bread. Grain is, is, is the substance that brings life to us. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. We need Jesus. He is substance to our spirit. Now, it fuels and it brings nutrients to us. But if you look at our nation today, we see a lot of areas where I believe we are not experiencing God's best. You know, these past two weeks with the racial tensions and struggles that America is facing, racism is not God's best. God does not want racism. He does not like racism. And racism has no place in the church or in our society. But yet for a nation, we have settled, I think, sometimes of not having the hard conversations that we need to have and coming alongside our black brothers and sisters and, and other ethnic groups to hear and to listen and to hear their stories. I'm so glad PAG to have that conversation in February, but hear my heart on this. You know, we cannot as America just hope this goes away. No, we need to identify, God, what are you speaking to our hearts in this moment? How can we learn from this and how can we get the grain and, and get rid of the chaff uh, uh, you know, how can we get God what you want to do and dispose of what the enemy keeps trying to do through racism? We look at this virus and the worry and the fear that's been attached to it. And we look at the death that's been attached to it. And we see, you know, that's not God. I mean, you know, God works in these moments. You know, God allows things to happen. But, but we, you know, God isn't the one causing the worry and the fear and the anxiety. That stuff does not nourish our souls. No, this is a time where we need to go, okay, if we're worrying or if we're having fear, we need to trust the Lord with this moment in our life. If we've lost our jobs, it's, the, it's trusting God with that and getting the grain from that moment and not trying to figure it out ourselves and not, not worrying about the future, but saying, God, I trust in you. And then it's, the half-hearted devotion that I think that we've discovered in the church through this three months of being away from the church building. It, it was It's easy to kind of, you know, show up and put a smile on your face and act like everything's okay. And you spend your hour, hour and a half, and you make that check in the, uh, in the, in the box, and you go, okay, I did church for the week. But yet, I, what I've seen God do in this, in this season is, is 
really bring church to what it really is. It's about relationships. It's about it's about spiritual growth. It's prayer. It's worship. It's discipleship. It's fellowship. It's evangelism. And God's been doing all of that with the buildings being closed. And yet he's showing us that it's not the power in the programs. It's the power in our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I believe this, that if you've taken three months and you've not pursued God, it is going to be so evident in your life. But for those who have taken the time and said, Lord, teach me. Give me your grain. Give me your grain out of this. I, I believe you're going to see the evidence of that as we all gather and come back together. Now, 2020, I believe, has been given to the church as an opportunity to get rid of the chaff. Have you ever wanted to start something new? But the biggest obstacle to starting something new is often what you always used to do the past and the the systems and and these are the things that I believe God is speaking to look the way that you've always done it is not working so why don't you try me for a change I love that we need Jesus we need God's grain in our life and so we have an opportunity God is separating what we do not need and he's giving to us what we need we need, this is what we need, we need love, we need God's forgiveness, we need unity, we need compassion, kindness, and gentleness with others. We need to listen more and we need to talk less. We need God's word and its leadership in our lives and in our homes. We need God's power through His Holy Spirit to embolden us to be the church that speaks in unity the gospel message. We need to understand each other by taking time to know one another. We need healing in the church, in our nation. We need hope. And the bottom line is this. We need Jesus. We need the grain and we need to get rid of the chaff in our life. We need what gives us life and substance and we need to get rid of the things that do not. So in our text today, we are seeing that Solomon built God's house on the location where his father stopped a plague from destroying the nation. Yes, if you go to 2 Samuel chapter 24, we'll see that story. And we'll see a story that shows us the work that was done by David that set up this, this moment that we see in, in 2 Chronicles where, David, where Solomon builds the temple on the location where David, by the help of the Lord and the grace and the mercy of the Lord, stopped a plague from destroying the nation. And he did so on a threshing floor, a place where the good is separated from the bad. So, um, I want to, the story is fascinating. I want to I talk about this a little bit. The story is fascinating in chapter 24 of 2 Samuel because, you know, it gives us great wisdom, if we'll pay attention to it, to uh, help us navigate the waters that we are in as a nation right now. You see, we have an opportunity with this COVID-19 and, and even with the racial tensions and struggles that we're experiencing right now, it is an opportunity for the church to take advantage of this moment and do what God wants us to do with it so that the generations following in our footsteps have something to build upon. Come on, we do not want to give them more of the same. We want to give them the good stuff. We do not want to give them the bad stuff. Wouldn't it be great if we can deal with this issue of racism right now in our nation so that the generations following our footsteps do not have to continue in the struggles that many black uh, men and women and, and other uh, uh, ethnic uh, groups have had to experience in our nation and in our churches? Wouldn't it be great if we could just deal with that? Wouldn't it be great if we can provide a place that isn't full of apathy to worship Jesus, but that we actually give them a foundation that is vibrant and real and, and full of God's power and God's love? 
and they take that and they build on it and and the, and the the end time work ushers in the the kingdom of god that's the opportunity that we have today and so uh, if we look at at chapter 24 second samuel the story goes like this i'm not going to take time to read it but i want you to read it a little bit later but david is is nearing you know he, he the end of his life and and he's he's fought the wars and israel has peace from from its enemies but yet uh, David does something, and he does something because of his pride, because of his position, and because of the the great prosperity of the nation. Boy, that'll speak right now. I mean, it wasn't too long ago when we were talking about how great things were in our nation. The economy was booming, and then it took a virus to stop it all. And I believe we can rebound by that, but if we have not done some soul searching in this moment, I'll tell you what, we are, we're not doing what we need to be doing. It's that threshing experience. Okay, God, where was our comfort zone? Where was our mind set on? Where was our hope at? Was it was it in our economy? Or Lord, were, were we putting our trust in you? It's a reset. It's a reset. It's a reset moment. And so David does something that truly grieves the Lord, and that is this. He 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 does, takes a census. Now, what that means is, is he he wanted to count all of his kingdom. He wanted to count his fighting men and to see how big and good and powerful they were. But what that did was that that just kind of uh, showed David kind of who he was, not who God is. And it really took the glory away from the Lord and the dependence upon God. And it put it all on David so that he could take pride in himself. It was a sin of pride. And in this story, we see that it grieved hearts, God's heart. And not only that, but David realizes his sin. And he truly repents of his sin. Because it's just it makes him sick inside that he allowed that pride to do that. And as a result, God uh, says, Okay, David, here is the punishments that you can choose from for your sin. And David picks one. He says, God you know you choose but you know don't let me fall in the hands of my enemies god you choose and so a plague comes on the nation and 70,000 people people they they died and this is hurting david and and so and so god speaks to the man of god uh, the prophet and, and and god shares with david what he's supposed to do and he tells david i want you to go to the jebusites home the threshing floor and there okay david comes and he meets this jebusite and the jebusite here's what david wants to do god tells him build an altar and make a make a sacrifice uh and offerings for me there and so the the jebusite was just going to give it all to the king and david said no 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 no. i'm going to buy this all from you because i am not going to give it god to something that didn't cost me anything and so David pays the price for it all, the, the, the property and the oxen and, 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 and everything that he used to make the sacrifice. And there, and at that threshing floor, David made an offering unto the Lord with something that cost him, and the plague stopped. It's an incredible story. Read it. Now, what does that got to do with what we're talking about today? Well, it's this. Solomon built the house of God on the same location where his father repented and worshiped the Lord. Church, this is our opportunity and it begins with repentance. Come on, if we're going to separate the grain from the chaff, that, that's going to take repentance. It's going to take an honest examination of our hearts. What is the true condition of our hearts? See, David was a man that was after God's heart. He worshiped the Lord. He he had a lifestyle that ebbed and flowed with the Lord. And yet we also see that David was a man who knew sin because he sinned. And he wasn't perfect. And we know that by looking at David's life. And in this situation, we see that David's pride caused him to sin. But have you ever thought about something? What really brings us to a lifestyle of worship? I mean that relationship with God where we know we're in lockstep with Him. Where we're eating the grain and we're getting rid of the chaff. I'm going to tell you, the doorway 
to that relationship. I believe the doorway to our nation's healing is repentance. It's, it's, it's truly feeling the weight of the sin that we are committing as a nation, as a people, and then bring it into your home, in your life. What is in your life that God's saying it needs to go? It goes through repentance. Look in 2 Samuel 24, in verse 10, look what David says here. David says this. David would, it says this. David was conscience stricken after he had counted the fighting men. And he said to the Lord, he said to the Lord, he said, God, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. There is personal responsibility that is taken. Now, Lord, he says, I beg you, take away the guilt of your servant. I have done a very foolish thing. Part of the experience of the threshing floor is repentance. But not repentance that, oh, I got caught. Not repentance that, oh, I feel guilty for, for what's happening to, to you know, my brothers and sisters. No, 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 no. It is you going into the presence of the Lord. And it's, it's maybe in, in that time where you're having true, honest conversations with a brother or a sister. Or, or maybe you're in that, that time in your prayer time where God is showing you. He's saying, this needs to go in your life. That attitude needs to go. That mindset needs to go. Look, you need to ask for forgiveness here. Things that just all of a sudden, it seizes us. And it's like this. I love that. It says, it says, David was conscious stricken. This is the stuff that you can't let go of. Come on, when it comes to our nation, when we look at abortion, can, can we just let it go? If we can, then we are not truly grieving abortion in America. If we look at the sex trafficking industry, if we are not truly grieving the loss of lives and families that are a result of our lust and, and perversion in this nation. If it's not moving our hearts, what's going on? And if you look at racism, if this is not moving you spiritually, I know it's going to move you emotionally, but if it's not moving you spiritually as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, where you go, God, show me my heart, then we're not conscious stricken. We're not truly repentant. But the Holy Spirit can bring us to that moment if we truly want to separate the grain from the chaff. And that's what God wants to do in the church in this season. Now look, repentance brings us to the threshing floor. David came to the threshing floor of the Jebusite. And there's where he made his offering that cost him something. Repentance comes with a cost it comes with humility it comes with saying i'm wrong i'm sorry father forgive me you know it comes with us taking personal responsibility of the condition of our nation and saying lord forgive us for we have sinned greatly against you have mercy on us but not just in some formal prayer that you know you're supposed to pray but Ask the Holy Spirit to truly move upon your heart and show you the true condition of your heart and your mind in these areas that are truly grieving the heart of God. Allow the Lord to examine your relationship with Him. Is it full of apathy? Is it full of busyness? Is it full of dead religion? Are you giving God lip service? Or are you truly saying, God, I want to know you. I want to seek you. I want to find you. And I want my life to be changed by you. And Lord, I want to be in lockstep with you and according to your word. This is where we are. I believe this is the opportunity that the nation has. We have an opportunity to repent. We have an opp opportunity to get right. We have an opportunity to say, Jesus, I need you. Change my heart change my life and from there the church can correct our nation can correct we can deal with these tough issues and deal with them not just not just politically you know throw them out for an election year and then and then set them on a shelf again no 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 can we do this can we look if we can do covid three months 
Shut down. I'm telling you, we can deal with the hard issues of life. But it's going to be through the examination of the heart. It's going to be the threshing floor. God's going to bring you to the threshing floor. And in that place, that place, remember, a Jebusite was a pagan. A Jebusite wasn't a God follower. There's no evidence that this man that had the property was actually following God. In fact, you know, they were a part of a people that that um, were not God followers. They, they, they followed other gods. But yet God used a pagan and his threshing floor to provide an atmosphere of repentance. Man, it's only God that can do that. And so David repented. David, it cost him. And in that sacrifice, the plague stopped and the people were saved. And then years later, as David had prepared Solomon to build the temple, on that site, that location, God builds the temple. Another generation builds on where another generation repented. You see, repentance brings healing. Repentance brings salvation. Repentance brings life. Repentance brings the grain and spits out the chaff. And that's what we need to do. And so let's stop right now. And let's ask the Lord to examine our hearts. And I encourage you to take this week and let God examine your heart. Let Him show you these issues that we're dealing with as a nation, the issues that you're dealing with in your home. And allow repentance to bring life and forgiveness to you. I'm so thankful that we live in a day where we are covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, where we have the forgiveness of our sins through what Jesus did on the cross. So let's be thankful right now for that. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that, Lord, today, just like David, we sin and we fall short. And there's so many times that our attitudes are not right and our mindsets and the way that we've been brought up have not been correct. And Lord, but you intersect our lives. And no matter what it is, you love us so much, you don't want us to stay in that sin. And so Jesus, through the cross that you died upon, and Lord, through the resurrection from the grave that you overcame death and sin, Lord, we now can come to you. And the Bible says that we can come boldly to the throne. And we can come to you and we can say, Jesus, search our hearts. Forgive us, Lord, where we have fallen away, where we have grown apathetic, where we have allowed racism in our hearts, where we have allowed fear and worry, where we've allowed doubt, where we've allowed, God, anxieties and, and, and the things that are not life-giving to control us. Lord, forgive us for our perversions. Forgive us for, for not, Lord, having a heart for, the, un, for the, the unborn and for not having a heart for those who are caught in the sex trafficking industry. Forgive us for participating, God, in the very things, Lord, that grieve your heart. We're so sorry, God. Lord, forgive us, Lord, for our greed as a nation, for putting, Lord, our value and our trust, Father, in the almighty dollar and the economy and, and, and all these things, Father, that we look at and we go, yes, we're fine, we're good, we're blessed. Lord, forgive us for putting our trust. Lord, in this moment, we have learned the value, God, a relationship with you and that must be first you must be first priority and Jesus we need the Holy Spirit to fill us with everything that you are so that we can truly be the church that you've called us to be so Lord only you can bring healing to the nation through these racial tensions and struggles God we do pray for our nation and we pray for healing we pray for that that Lord that we, you would teach us what you want us to know and to learn and that we father can move forward from this moment and our nation can be healed from from racism in Jesus name oh God help us we need your help Lord Lord forgive us Lord God for our attitudes of greed and forgive us Lord God for our apathy with you and Lord restore us to what you want us to be as a church so that the nation that, that the generations following in our footsteps would not inherit our problems but they would inherit the power <laughs> the power 
and the provision to do what you've called us to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, maybe for the first time, you said, Jesus, I want you to be Lord and Savior of my life. That's the key. God, you be in charge. The Bible teaches us that he makes us brand new. We get new beginnings. And we don't get stuck in the old way, but we can go to the new way. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, and you said, Jesus, be Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sin. I promise you, you have a new beginning ahead. And God's Spirit is going to lead and guide you. And you, if you need more information, please contact us so that we can help you in this new beginning in your life. PAG, I love you. And I'm so, I'm so glad that we've had this time together. And I'm so glad that we're able to start meeting together. And so um, I pray that this blessed you and helped position you to move forward and to build something great for your family following in your footsteps and for the believers that are following in our footsteps that we would really truly be able to provide a place for them to grow and experience Jesus in a wonderful way. Love you, PAG. God.